All right, uh, we're getting started. Um, and as usual, I don't have great confidence in how stuff works, so I'm just going to talk for a bit. Um, whoops. Which gives me time to set up my tea. Excellent prop to have. I just watched Alex's uh, talk, which was great. Um, that was cool. I've, I've talked to somebody that's like worked on a search and uh, done some search engine stuff before. Anyway, it was cool though. Um, and but neat to hear someone that actually had worked worked at Yandex and actually knew search engine stuff because this other person was just like exploring it. Um, oh, it's a cool post if you want to maybe Alex Sander if you're if you're listening. Um, you might you probably know most of this stuff, but. Um, his name is Michael Nielsen. Um, he did a post on kind of how to build a search engine, uh, or like how he built a search engine that indexes like a whatever, like a, a non-trivial amount of the web. I think it was like 0.1% of the web was the goal or something like that. Um, all right, so I'm also gonna chill for a little bit while we wait. Hey, Alexander Vikramjit, sorry, I'm not sure. If you can, if you can convey in chat how to pronounce your name, I'll give it another shot. Vikramjit. This is really hot. So we're going to look at um, how terminals work today. Um, is the idea? What's your visual like right now? Do you have any visual, or is that just my problem that I don't have visual? Yeah, can anybody see anything? I, I'm I'm trying to go pro and like have two screens and have another one I'm watching it on, but uh, on my iPad where I'm streaming it, um, I still don't see anything. Um, okay, so I'm gonna wait till either I have this working or someone tells me it is working. You're pronouncing my name. For oh, cool. That's great. You can hear me. Well, that's good. Can anybody see anything? Um, my test stream just has. Okay, the, here it looks good. All right, it's just a problem with my iPad, I guess. Okay, great. I'm gonna get started. Um, so, um, terminals. So I think they're really cool. Uh, let's let's get started. I'm going to try to be really explicit about when I'm switching so you can see both screens because I'm not streaming the whole screen. OK, well, here we go. Um, so yeah, Terminal Whispering is this, the silly title I came up with for this. Um, the idea is that terminals, if we understand kind of how they work, then we'll know how to do some of the cool stuff like full screen terminal applications or um, um, Oh, sorry, I'm distracted by chat. Chat's so fun. Community is so fun. Um, but yeah, how to do these full screen applications, how to um, you know do something like a progress bar, how to write in color, how to um, you know go full screen and then have it come back, like top or Vim or Emacs or something. All right, um, so let's start looking. So first, what are terminals? Um, when we say terminal, we usually mean um, right terminal emulator. Um, so the question becomes then, so when I say terminal, I'm actually thinking of one of the, if I just to switch screens real quick, what I'm thinking of is one of these things, right? Or even maybe even like this one or something, right? The thing I have two of here are what I am talking about. Um, but originally what we were talking about was, um, well, we, let's look at what terminals are so we know what it is we're emulating. Um, what I usually think of as a terminal, the, these terminal emulators, the software things we use on our computers are, um, what we're emulating are these things, right? Um, and I guess that's true, but these are already kind of emulators. Um, the, I call these like video terminals. Um, and these were, they had additional features, but they were also kind of emulating uh, these things, teletypes. And a lot of our abstractions still come from this. Um, so the main 
important inherited thing here is that uh, we send these things bytes. They're little processors, right? They have, you know, the video terminals up here have at least like little little microprocessors or little computers in them. Um, and then these, yes, also have something. Somehow they work. Um, and we send bytes to them, and they display something on the screen, which is closely related to the bytes we send them, but maybe not byte for byte. Maybe not every single byte causes it to write another character. Um, and then things that are typed get sent into a computer, or to usually as we're like application programmers, they get sent into our application. Um, I just think this is great. Um, this is an ad for Teletype from Wikipedia, um, and I would almost just read it to you if I didn't feel like that was not a great video presentation, maybe. Maybe I'll just do it anyway. A Teletype printer is a communications device with a keyboard similar to a typewriter, which enables you to send and receive printed messages. Uh, with it, written word can be sent instantaneously by wire without the office or plant, within the office or plant, or clear across the country. Whoa, this is crazy. Okay. Across the country, pretty cool. Um, if you want further reading about how this actually works, I haven't published this presentation yet because it's really not done, um, and I don't even know how to like safely publish this because I'm trying a new presentation thing, so it's like being served by my by a node server. So anyway, I need to figure out how that works. But um, if you look at this, TTY demystified is a great article. It's this one, um, and then there are just some questions here that are like clearing up this terminology a bit. Um, so I found this really helpful. We're going to look at a diagram kind of like this. It's going to be a lot simpler, but I think here's the more real diagram. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see. No, we're good. Okay. I'm always afraid of screwing up what you can see. Um, okay, but let's keep going. So this is going to be our little diagram. We're saying that there is a keyboard and that we send key presses to this terminal thing, whatever that is, and that the terminal um, you know, has a display. That's the thing we see on screen, and it sends things to, I'm saying our screen. This could be like our eyeballs here, right? We're sending stuff. Um, we can read from the terminal. So in our program, we say, you know, standard in dot read, and we get some bytes back. Um, our application, we're going to be in Python today mostly. Um, and then in our application, we can write bytes to the terminal, and those get sent to the terminal, and those probably will result in some things being displayed. Um, so let's look at just the output part of that first. Um, oh, Alex was asking how to pronounce my name. I pronounce it Thomas Ballinger, um, but I have no idea how it's properly. I guess if it's your name, you kind of get to choose. So ignoring, I'm not sure. Um, what bytes can we write, and what happens? Um, so. What bytes can we send? Well, simple. We can just send ASCII bytes. Um, you, if you have one of the terminals, you can send it. And let, let's let's start doing this right now. Um, I'm going to pull up um, this thing here, and for now, let's just start with um, Python. I have to practice swapping back and forth. Okay, I'm in the left panel here. I can say stuff like print, and I can send these four bytes. Right, s equals this. Um, the length of the string is four. It is a string of bytes, which it would say if we were in Python 3, it's their bytes. Um, and if we print them, um, then they get printed out to the terminal. Now, this is a little bit confusing because input and output is happening in this left one. Um, so I'm going to do something here where um, I'm going to send bytes to a terminal and have them just display by using two terminals. Um, I'm going to run this bpython thing and then port socket, um, equal socket dot socket. And then s.connect to localhost um, 34. Whoops. Cool. So in the right side, we're gonna I'm gonna send bytes to this thing, and we're gonna see them printed out, and I won't have to type stuff in between. So it'll just be like an interactive way to like send bytes. But we don't need to do this networking stuff. We could just be a program writing bytes. Um, so I can say something like, I can write those four bytes we wanted to write before, right? And I do that, it works, is what this is saying. And then over here, we see that the cursor has moved over to where it, there, it was over here, now it's over there, and we have those bytes there, right? So let's um, swap back and see what the next thing is. I'd love to have questions at any point, um, especially because I don't, like no one's seen this material before, and it could be it could make no sense at this point. Um, so we just saw we can send ASCII bytes. Um, ASCII as a like reminder. Do I show a diagram later? I'm not sure I do. Maybe I do. Maybe I show it right here. Nope. Okay. Um, this is showing how in Python 3 we would write bytes. Um, 
I was just using Python 2 right now, but at PyCon, I'm going to use Python 3. Um, um, but this is how to write bytes. Otherwise, you have Unicode issues. Um, oops. So I'm, this is a reminder that the reason we can use ASCII is that this is um, lip sync issue. Oh, um, darn. Maybe refresh. I have no idea. Um, oh, it could be my streaming. It says the health is OK, but I should be doing this like at work or something where I have a better connection. It's not complaining here about the quality of it. Um, Right. Okay. So we're we're these things. These are both like fancy telegraph things, right? We started using telegraph machines because, or typewriters, because that's what was around. Um, let's look at ASCII real quick. ASCII. Oh, because of the audio buffer, Alexander. Is there anything I can do about that? Um, quickly. I mean, I, I can I can do it later. I, it may not be worth it for this one. Um, it's just a few millisecond sync issue. Yeah, I am using um, OBS, and I probably don't have the hardware I should to be doing it. Um, so let's just look at ASCII for a second. Oh, we were going to look at this in a moment anyway. Anyway, so we have this table. These are the bytes we could obviously send. Um, but let's look at our next bullet point here. Um, whoops, I haven't used, learned to use this yet. So we can send bytes, right? Um, we can also send control characters. So this is where this gets interesting. Um, some bytes that you send don't result in that byte being printed. So let's hop back over to our terminal here. What if I were to send, um, you've seen this one before. So if I send hello, and then I put backslash n, which happens to be, um, I don't know exactly um, what it is, but we'll, we'll look. Um, we have a string that's like this. Um, First of all, that, that syntax, OK, it looks like I lost my connection here, interestingly. Um, oh, <laughs> because I bound it to the same variable name and it got garbage collected. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so we'll have to reconnect later. Um, but this is actually one byte. This is just Python syntax thing. C does this too. Um, if I were to like look at the length of s, we'll see that it's just one. This is just one byte. Um, which byte it is, it's like the 10th byte, it looks like. Um, and if I say. Um, so now I need to like redo this stuff. All right, and now I send um, s dot send this again. Then I could say send, and I could send that byte, that new line one, um, and we're going to call this a line feed, I think. Um, and you'll watch that now when I, after I send that, my cursor goes down a line, which is cool. Um, that's good to know, though. Um, OK, and then I could write some more stuff here. So we should think of this more as a can't. Well, it doesn't make sense yet. So we've done new line. Now let's look at another one. Um, let's look check out this one. When I do that, we call the carriage return. Uh, the cursor over here moves from where it was here back to here. Um, so I can write something else. Hi. Yeah, I've just overwritten it. So it helps if we think about like starting to, um, we should think about the terminal as a as a canvas that we can write anywhere to. Um, I could do another one. If I say slash F, that moves the cursor down. If I do it again, it'll move it down again. And I could say, hi, um, right? And it writes it over there. And then what else do we have? Um, B goes back by one. Um, I think there's something for going up. Um, I'm going to cheat and look back at my presentation because I think I list them. All right. V, B, F, T. Yeah, none of these. V, B, F. Um, what's this one do? All right, that goes down as well. V, B, F. We looked at goes down as well. V is going to... No. T is going to like tab. We're going to go over, right? So the idea is that we can write in a variety of ways. Well, the idea is that we have in-band signaling here going on, right? In this stream that was supposed to be the stuff that it would print, we can say special things um, that right, will do weird stuff, that it can move the cursor around. Um, here's another one. Um, we'll see if this works. This is a great one. Oh, 
uh, it didn't work um, because in settings <laughs> I turned it off because I thought it was super annoying. All right, try it now. Can you hear that? It's a bell. So <laughs> when you write slash a to a terminal, um, there's a, a like audio bell. Um, I don't know if you can hear that because I would have had to set it up in the streaming things just right, and I bet I didn't. Um, yeah, I totally didn't. Um, it only works when we're in here. It just doesn't work. Okay, well, trust me, there was a little visual indicator, right? Bells happen when you do slash A. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, what else should we be sending? So let's look back out over at our presentation here. Um, so we can send control characters. Um, whoops. And these are in this ASCII table here, right? These are things that sort of make sense on typewriters or, or telegraph things or whatever, um, I don't know, teletype stuff was. Um, good, you can see it. Okay, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so it, it, you'll hear it if you have your you know computer set up to do that. It's called the bell character slash A. Um, so write all of these special ones in here, if you can see my mouse, um, this stuff. They, they all have these special meanings. Um, I don't know most of them. All right, what other bytes could we send? Um, well, we just did the demo. Um, so if our terminal is using encoding, then we could use several bytes to make the same character, right? So I could uh, write these bytes. Uh, this is this is not a deep concept if you're you know already familiar with this, but um, right? If I write um, these bytes. Now, first of all, you have to understand this kind of the C syntax for writing bytes. This is a string of length three. Let's let's show that first. Um, bytes equals this length of bytes. Right. This is a length string of length three. This is syntax for specifying bytes that don't happen to have like a nice ASCII representation. Um, if I were to send these bytes, um, look at that. We get a little delta thing. So <laughs> people, I don't know. I bet people that don't, non-Americans basically, are more used to this than, than Americans are. But um, sometimes you can't represent everything you want in ASCII, and so you have to agree on some encoding. So here we see that we sent three bytes, and it only rendered one. Um, so this is starting to suggest um, you know, that we're not limited to this one byte, one um, glyph showing up on the screen. Um, and we're about to do something. Oh, shoot. Um, so this is what I was showing that whole time. Darn. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so here, right, I had these bytes. I said that their length is three. Uh, these are the bytes that I did. Um, and when we send them over, we write that cool character over there. Um, you type what you can't see. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I have about like a 25 second leg or so. So when I make mistakes, <laughs> it'll just be a 25 second leg. Um, all right, so we see that we can send other things like this, and it's writing them over there. Cool. Um, now we're back. Um, I should just share the whole screen. I just need to figure out a way to do that kind of security safely. Um, all right, so back in our presentation here. You can, oh, this is like a Python note. It's like you can specify Unicode things and then it'll look at, Python will take care of this. And by looking at some environmental variables and things, it'll figure out that you actually want to take that, that text, that Unicode string and encode it with whatever the encoding of the terminal is. Here we happen to be UTF-8. Um, it's not so important to us. I think Python's great and I'd love to talk about Python, but we're here to talk about terminals. Um, okay, next, this is where this gets, this gets cool. Um, there's just a bunch of weird stuff that you can do too. Um, ANSI escape sequences. Um, so when we started using these things, these video terminals, uh, there were things that didn't make sense with uh, typewriters and they weren't planned for by the ANSI committee, whoever the standardization people were that were making, um, you know, making up the rules for these things. Um, but they did make sense here. Like, oh, yeah, of course you could move your cursor up, right? Or to the left, <laughs> which are things didn't make as much sense on a typewriter where you would be overriding something maybe. Um, so and with all sorts of cool stuff that we can do. So we're gonna look at this. Um, here are some other cool ones. So I could say something like this and that would move my cursor 23 rows up. So let's try that. Um, switch over to terminal. Um, 
right? I'm going to write those bytes, but I'll use a quote here, right? Look at that. Now my cursor's way up there. <laughs> and now I can write hello from the top of the screen. Hello. Look at that. All right. Um, what else have we got? Um, I'm going to try to make it so I can see my casting stuff at the same time. So I'm less likely to screw up. Um, all right. Back in our presentation, it looks like we can use... Um, this sequence of characters, slash x1b, which is one character, it's the escape character, and then an open square bracket, and then a 2, and then a capital J. Um, slash x1b, open square bracket, which is called like the CSI escape sequence, and then 2j, 2j. Look at that, it cleared everything. Um, right. Um, but you couldn't see that because, okay, here. So <laughs> it cleared everything, and I wrote hello because I sent this. Um, right, so we've seen that one. Let's look at our next one. Uh, we've got hide the cursor. We have start writing in bold. Okay, well, let's let's show that. Those those are cool ones. Um, start writing in bold. Now I've, I've already probably forgotten it, but what is it? It's this, cool. Um, yeah. Start writing in bold. Enter. Cool. Um, we didn't see anything there, but now if I write hello. Hi. Um, look at that. It's bold. Cool. What about if I start writing in red? Um, 31M, I think. Yo. Look at that. Now it's red. Okay, so we can treat this thing no it's a little weird stream oriented right like everything i write now is still going to be read until i turn that off slash x1b open is it 30 m is that how we turn it off zero m i think great turned off now um let's move it back to the beginning of the screen yeah and do a new line a new line right hello great to so to, to as a reminder, you can do all this stuff from an application. I'm just doing it here and sending it to this other screen because I'm using the terminal for input stuff. But in your program, you can write stuff like, oh, I guess I want to print this in red. So I'll print the start red character and then, or start red sequence and then my message and then the stop sequence, which is this one. Um, the place you want to look for all this stuff is, well, we're about to get to it, I bet. Um, yeah, the Wikipedia on anti-escape sequences. That's what you want to read. Um, it'll have all of these. Now, it's kind of ugly to put these in your code, so you shouldn't do that. But it's a nice hack. You can get a start with it. Um, more demo. We did that. Okay, what other bytes could we send? Um, that's it. So those are all the bytes we can send. Um, so, so far, we've learned that the, the terminal thing is a little smarter itself. Um, Right. Or oh, did we not have terminal there? No, we did. We did. Right. That was a while ago. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> We're like like four for five or so now. Um. So any questions about the? So this is just like the terminal is a smart little box, right? It does it does more things than we would think. Um. I'm drawing it here as right this little thing here, and when we we sent right bytes to it. Those aren't necessarily the bytes that come out on the display. Um, yeah, any questions? I'm going to need to speed up a little bit um, to get through this because I am excited to see um, GB is talk, Jeeb's talk, um, because he's talking about Plan 9 after this, which is cool, good stuff. Um, I don't know much about it. I just hear people really excitedly talk about it and some of the like different ways things could have gone had it worked out, or had it been more popular. All right, we're done with what bytes we can send. Next up is um, what, how does getting information from the terminal work? Um, happy to interrupt at any time with questions, though. Um, and if you don't want us to do a question now, if you give me a question later, that would be great, too, because then I would know that you were confused. But questions now are great. Um, if we were going to put some of the stuff that we just did together, we could build stuff like progress bar progress bars we could build stuff like um 
progress bar is the big one. Um, we could do stuff like write, write snake in the terminal um, because you could move your cursor to the right spot, draw your thing, move it to the next spot, draw your thing. Um, I did a cast of this a while ago. Um, it's fun stuff. I wonder if I just have it around. Um, let's look at that. And by look at that, I mean let's go to the terminal. Great. And now I wonder where it is. This terminal, right? Python test.py. Look at that. It's kind of sort of snake. How did you control it? Probably Vim controls. Kind of sort of snake. So this is a crappy version of snake we made a while ago. Yay. Um, Anyway, we can do stuff like that, which is kind of neat. I think it's a nice place to start doing kind of some graphical stuff um, because wait, it's <laughs> there's still a lot to it, but I think sometimes there's less or there's a, it's a more gradual curve than like real GUI stuff. Um, all right, next up, we'll continue with the presentation. Um, the next bit is, right, um, when the user types at the keyboard, when do we get that stuff? So you probably are aware that um, when we're writing in Python here, um, right? Um, whoops. What's going on? Um, <laughs> Now I have that alert thing on. It's really annoying. Um, OK, it's off again. Um, right, we're in Python, and we do something like, yes, NetHack clone, yes. That's exactly the stuff to do. Um, that's good stuff. Um, so when we say something like, whoops, <laughs> I'm doing this without read line for demonstration purposes. When I say something like a equals raw input here, um, what I'm typing right now, my program doesn't get it. This is confusing at a REPL, so let's try it in program. Um, in test, test2.py, um, if I have write a program that's like um, message equals raw input, um, print your message, right? And then this is, I don't know, it's a, it's a chat client or something. So we're saying true, and we say something like um, print. And then also, um, I'm like, here's a here's a message from your friend. Whatever. Okay, right. When I run this program, test two dot pi, um, my program is frozen right now. Right, it's waiting for this input, and I. This is the intended thing now because I'm writing out a message like your your hair looks awesome today, and then I hit enter and then it goes and runs the rest of the code and then we come back around to this. But this is not ideal for if I want to hit a key and have it do something right away. Um, so by default in that diagram, um, in this diagram. Um, In this diagram here, um, the key presses come in and they go to the terminal and they don't get them in this read call until uh, some until they hit enter, basically. Um, and this is like kind of known as line discipline. I need to study up on this more. But the, the terminal um, kind of buffers that. And it's not until you hit enter that you actually get it in your application. Um, and you, there's some really basic editing you can do in the terminal before your application gets the data, which is basically like backspace is the one that matters. But you have backspace. Um, yeah, data path tasks your application until you hit in turn. You have backspace. You have delete word, reprint line, delete line. Not that much useful stuff. Um, normally, you use read line, which is cooler. Um, it gives you like lots more. All the stuff you really want, like Control A to go to the beginning of the line. Um, let's look at what this looks like because I'm specifically messed up my Python, so we could do this. Um, right. So now I'm in. Or we can go back to here where it's bigger. Um, no, we can't because we don't want to do this. Um, Python. Sure that we are streaming this. We are. 
Um, hello. So now we're not using this as a, well, we're just looking at the, the like prompt behavior here, right? Like I type stuff. Um, if I press the left arrow key, it doesn't work. Right arrow key doesn't work. Like it just sends the bytes that would be sent by that. Um, but if I do um, delete, it does work. And if I do control W, it works. And if I do control U, it works. Um, and the control R also does something. I'm not sure what. Control R, like reprints the line, it seems like. So if it was changed, if I changed something and I wanted to reprint it, um, so this would make sense, you know, on an older terminal device, maybe. Um, anyway, that's not a lot. And then when I finally hit enter, then the Python program that's running the interpreter, I guess it's C, um, is going to finally get that input, but it doesn't get it until then. So we need to change that if we don't want that. Um, next thing, echoing back characters, um, which you can see because in here I said echoing back characters, that's the next issue. Um, right now, when I type in the terminal here, um, I see it right away. Um, so there's a few things we want to do. Um, here we probably want to set C break. Let's do that. So there are combinations of terminal settings. You set these with these, um, uh, what is it? Um, Python, Python, import F, F, C, yeah, this stuff, man F, C, N, T, L. Um, so you can read this stuff, this file control stuff. There are a lot of flags. There are ways we can tell the terminal how to behave. Um, and with this stuff, we might do things like, um, I'm going to need to go into an existing program because I'm not going to be able to do this off the top of my head. Um, so if we look at um, Um, term helpers, right? Term helpers. Um, something like this would be a context manager that would do the non-blocking thing. So that was good. Well, we haven't even talked about that. So normally when you read on standard in, it's a blocking call. If we don't want to be blocking, we can use something like this. Um, C break is going to take care of some of the stuff that we were worried about. Um, let's take all. Um, Yay, and now we can do stuff like while true, um, all within the context manager of with C break, um, we're gonna get this different behavior. So you can see the kind of stuff we would do. Um, I just look it up every time basically, but it's we're setting things on the file descriptor where these are system calls to say like, hey, you should you know do things differently. Um, and we can say stuff like um, time.sleep here. And then we're not doing it non-blocking. So a read will still wait. It's just going to give us a single one. So I'm going to print um, raw input. Does raw input wait? It might wait. So I'm just going to do um, do we have sys? No. Import sys. C break of when you instantiate these, you pass in the stream of sys.standin. We're putting standard in in C break mode, and we can say sys dot whoops sys dot yeah that's correct. Why is that a problem? What do you know? Okay, sys dot stand in dot read one byte. Let's just print that dot upper or something. Um, now we can run this Python test three dot pi, and now um, I get. You're right, now it's responding on each kind of modify, sort of the terminal, it's maybe more the terminal driver or something. We're, if we're sticking with our simple explanation, um, then all this stuff is the little capital, right, this terminal thing, um, which might be more complicated than we're saying. But that's a thing you might want to tell the terminal to do. All right, um, what else? Um, Echoing back characters. Oh, we didn't turn that off. So one of the things you can do there is turn off echo, which is something that happened when we did do that. That's when you do C break. C break is a combination of the things. Um, for a lot of the stuff, you can look at the man pages. So man space C break, man space raw, man space um, that F N T C L thing. Signals. Maybe let's skip that. Um, but there are some signals that happen sometimes. Um, 
byte sent without being typed. Okay, this is cool. And maybe we'll do this. So both of these one, later ones are more complicated necessary. Or I kind of found out about these when I was writing this new front end for um, bpython. Um, you need to do stuff like, so bpython is this, this cute Python interpreter where it's like, look, you have auto completion and it pops up below and then it goes away. Um, why was this relevant? Oh, uh, so signals, you get signals like, hey, the size of the terminal changed. You get signals like, hey, please suspend the process. Um, so while we're in here, I can say control Z and it goes away and then it comes back. Um, so you might have to deal with some of this stuff. Um, this must have, what was the other one that seemed cool? Okay, bytes sent without being typed. So this goes back to, um, in our diagram here, right, the terminal thing here, it's possible to send bytes. Um, we might write some bytes that don't involve anything being displayed. And we might also, those bytes might not, might cause other writes, bytes to be written back as a way to communicate with the terminal. This isn't super common, but cursor query works this way. Um, let's see if we can just like, Wikipedia, um, what is it? Wikipedia, what's it called? Um, ANSI escape code. Um, let's check out cursor queer cursor or something. Mm. Cursor position, save cursor position, reports per cursor position. All right, 6n. So in here, we'll just quickly look at an example. Um, say we're in Python here, and I um, print slash x1b opens when. Um, <laughs> This is kind of hilarious, I think. Um, so I didn't type this. That just appeared typed there um, because I sent the terminal these things, right? So the keyboard never typed those keys. But when I say, um, what is it? Print, you know, slash, slash x1b, 1b open uh, 6n. Um, I write those bytes to the terminal. And then it writes back to me. Um, well, it's like I haven't called read yet, but when I, if I were to call read, that's what I would get. And I sort of have called read because I'm in this Python interpreter. Um, so this makes less sense interactively, but is a cool, um, you know, it, it's very much that it's that diagram thing, right? So when we're looking at our diagram here. Um, the application can write bytes to the terminal and then it could read some back this, this cursor query position thing, which you don't need to use much. Um, all right, I'm really interested in uh, questions at any point, um, but I think we're maybe on track and I'll actually finish on time so we can go learn about plan nine soon. Um, shoot, but I'm really lost trying to find the right windows here. Um, web browser, this, okay. Well, we looked at that. We looked at all these things. Um, we can, okay, these are the kind of things, you just look up these things if you want to change these or do what I'm about to tell you to do, which is not to deal with any of this junk and use a library instead. Other terminal things, let's skip these. Um, hierarchy of when, so there's like a timeline of like, we kind of alluded to, it's like people progressively add more features um, and then it's like, a, it's like the, Precursor to the browser wars, kind of right, where um, somebody makes their first web browser, and then someone makes a web page, and someone makes another web browser, and someone writes a web page that uses features of one of the web browsers, but not the other. So all the web browsers have to add that feature. Um, that same thing happened earlier with terminal emulators, um, and similarly, it's like abstraction built on abstraction built on abstraction. Even if you don't use the old features of HTML, you have to implement them, and it's annoying. Um, Scroll up buffer, we won't talk about this. this is some cool stuff. Um, compatibility concerns. All right, so say you're writing your net hack or you're writing your thing with a cool progress bar or whatever. Things you want to think about are, um, you know, have you ever used curl or some, some tool like that 
and then you direct its output to a file and you get this annoying progress bar that's like one equal sign, two equal sign, three equal sign, four equal sign, and it gets bad. I guess I'm, that's backwards for you, but it's going like this, going along. Um, that's something you want to send to a terminal and you don't want to send to a file. So there are ways to kind of predict what your output is. Um, LS does this, right? If I run um, like here, if I were to run LS, um, it gives me this like nicely spaced out stuff, which is based on like the size of the terminal and things. But if I say ls goes to temp.txt, um, they are on different lines. So it's possible to detect what your output's going to and decide what to do based on that. Um, what else? Yeah, don't write the escape sequences in your code. Um, curses is this thing that provides those. It has like a database um, or n curses, which is probably what you use. Like in Python, when you import and curses, you're getting in curses, I think. Um, there are these databases of what kind of terminal you use because it's sort of a standard, but not quite. I mean, it is a standard, but not every terminal conforms to it. And then you want to be able to ask questions like, does this terminal support this or this? But, and this, what I'm saying now is what people would say for a long time, but it's so standard to have these kinds of terminals now that it would be okay. And anyway, it's not the end of the world if you don't do this. Um, you're right, there are databases that say, oh, if I want to clear the screen, how do I do it? Um, you could probably just use the common clear screen like escape sequence. Um, but you pro probably already have this T put program. Um, so let's go look at that. Um, I don't know the names of it. So I'm gonna say nan t man T put, and it'll show me some examples, hopefully. Um, here we go, clear, cool. So I could say T put clear, and this writes exactly the characters to the screen that would clear my screen. Or I could put that in a temp file and then view that, and it shows me what characters they were. It's like, oh, that's how you print the screen. Um, so there you go. That's T puts probably the right way to do this, uh, or at least the shell way to do it. Um, and if you read that man page, you'll see all the stuff your terminal can do. Um, that's it for that. Tools. Okay, so this is a, supposed to be sort of a Python talk, um, like what tools you use for Python. So this this one is very much. This is a Python one. Um, I wouldn't use curses. Um, it's good as a compatibility later, bad as an API. I would use something like Blessings um, by Eric Rose. Ha ha, it's a pun, right? Um, great, you know, good library for abstracting this stuff. Um, someone named Jeff Quast that wrote some additional stuff that's gonna be in Blessings. Um, I won't show you Blessings, but it's, it's really nice. Blessings, GitHub. Right, so it just has a much better API for doing stuff like, um, hey, I want this to be bold. Print that string with it bold. Red and bright green. Um, location. Um, what else do we have? Um, x84 is this cool. Jeff Quas is cool, basically. Um, Python prompt toolkit, also very cool if you're trying to make a command line thing. Um, yeah, only people running obscure old versions of Linux probably, I agree, with uh, VIX86. Um, prompt, Python, Python prompt toolkit is cool. Um, Erwid, you maybe, I mean, it's useful to know this stuff, but you maybe don't want to really do that. You want to use this Erwid library. Um, let's look at my favorite Erwid program, um, a great Python debugger. Um, temp.txt, do we have something here? Um, I need a file. Um, Um, whatever. Useful. What's that? Cool. This is about decorators or something. Hard to tell what this is about. Um, whatever. If I say um, Python dash m p u d b useful dot pi, um, I get this full screen debugger thing, which is super awesome. Anyway, this was built using that Erwid library. Um, if you want to build stuff like this, call them like text user interfaces. Check out Erwid. I think it's the way to do it. Um, it's a debugger if you've seen debuggers before, right? Do it down here, and I uh, I don't know call one of these functions. And I can step into the function, and I can like look at my stack frames, and I can see my variables at each point, all this good stuff. Um, there are some other cool Erwid programs. This is just the kind of thing you could do with Erwid, so you should use it. Um, yes, and you can see that. Awesome. I think we're almost done, which is good because we only have 15 minutes left. Um, he wrote one called Curses, which I'll show real quick. 
um, or curtsies, I mean. <laughs> I wrote a library called curtsies. There are a few things it does that some other things don't do, but it's less well supported. So you should maybe not use it. But if you're interested in those specific things, which are basically um, the format strings have a few special features and mm, the other reason to do it is because you need to do some of the cursor query stuff. You need to say, where is the cursor now? You want to do one of these full screen things with resizing and make it work really nicely. Um, well, you probably shouldn't use my library. It's just me, so I'm advertising it because um, I think it's cool. Um, random cool stuff. OK, so now that you know this terminal stuff, there's some cool terminal things. This is a point I'd love to have questions, too, because I, this is not really like important information anymore. Um, I wrote this, or I'm working on a thing called bpython, which is really cool. Didn't write it originally, but I've been working on it recently. Um, termcast is this thing that because like your terminal is built with just this series of bytes, um, if you were to record those bytes and send them somewhere, um, someone else could recreate your terminal. So let's look at termcast real quick. Um, so if I were to telnet to termcast.org, um, up would come this thing, and I can watch people play NetHack. And the way I'm watching them is they stream the bytes they needed to like build that NetHack session, and this stuff comes up, right? So super cool. So this is bytes being streamed to my terminal. My terminal interprets them and says, oh, this one says playing a red thing there, and it displays in my terminal. Um, I have a friend that has written a Python implementation of these um, that you should check out. There's a client too, so you can install the, I think it's pip install um, termcast client or something. And you can stream to this server or other servers. And I like to do it with programming. I don't play NetHack. Anyway, so that's this, just this cool idea that this makes possible. Um, what else? OK, I said bpython was cool. Brief bpython PSA. Look at this. You have tab completion. It's really cool. Tab completion. Look at that. We know the methods. We get help on them. Um, the big thing we have is. Um, undo, right? Now B isn't defined anymore. So I think that's cool. A is not defined anymore. Um, next up, Python Terminal Toolkit. Check it out. It's cool. Um, how to play with the terminal. Use tput. All right. Um, we're almost almost done. Yeah, that's that's all. those are all the things I have. Um, love to take questions. Um, or like things that you would like to know more about that maybe I don't know more about either. But if you ha were sitting going to talk about terminals and PyCon, you'd want to hear. <sighs> what other cool things we talked about? Um, so if you're going to write NetHack, stuff you would want would be for a real interface like Erwid. Um, but if you want to just get started, uh, you probably want like a grid. You want to have a way to output it. Um, and then that's where all of your like you know, paint this thing red, make it bold. It's a it's a super powered monster. It should be like blinking. All right, let's let's look at cool. <laughs> um, let's just see what I can remember off the top of my head of some of these. Um, S dot send um, slash x one b. Been I don't know two. Let's see what that does. I don't, I can't tell what it did or anything. Let's try three. Let's try four. Ooh, that's underline. That's kind of cool. Let's try five. Uh, six. Ooh, blink. We found blink. All right, I think blink is great. Um, I made a thing <laughs> that I'm going to show you. Code, curtsies, um, let's see. Work on curtsies. I think Blink is cool. Um, um, Python test, test, curtsies, paint. So 
So I added to my test suite this thing. Oh, extended characters. Earlier you should extended characters is properly handling. All right, this is actually a real question. Um, extended characters is proper handling of double byte characters. You have a terminal compatible thing as well. Yeah, it is. Your terminal emulator has to be able to deal with that. Um, uh oh, why did what happened here that? Um, terminal compatibility thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a terminal compatibility thing. Um, all right, check out this, this error reporting. Look at that. Isn't that's right there where the part that we're wrong. I think that's cool. Um, so VIX86 says, um, really short extended characters. Um, I think by extended characters, I think VIX86 means like stuff that isn't ASCII, um, which is sometimes called extended ASCII if you just have like the, you know, 256 characters and then there's other things like other Unicode characters that you might encode with something like UTF-8. Yeah. Um, it's proper handling of double byte characters. So by double byte characters, um, he's saying that some characters take more than one byte to encode in encodings like UTF-8, right? So, um, Sorry, I'll fix it later. <laughs> um, whoops. No, I, I like that one. Um, all right, so we're I have s equals. Um, we got to wrap up kind of soon. Um, yeah, I've got these characters here. Um, and then if I print the len of s, it's going to be really big. Actually, I'll just. Oops. Um, yeah. So the length of that, these are actually nine bytes there. So the first, um, I actually have nine bytes here. There are these bytes, um, but some of those belong to different ones. Um, yeah, it's a terminal compatible thing, right? For me, in iTerm, there's a settings thing that says, hey, what encoding should I use? Um, and then you set an environmental variable usually that somebody reads, like the, the application reads and says, ah, that's the encoding of this terminal. Um, it's kind of messy because they could be reported wrong. Um, and then it writes those bytes and hopes that what the terminal displays is what you wanted. Um, term terminals, they could show the characters, but figuring out the proper place of where the cursor should be was iffy. Um, interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't remember any, so I'm going to Google, um, double wide. Um, by the way, I did a blog post about this very topic, um, that uh, while I have your rapt attention, I can just point you to, um, uh, maybe it's the most recent one. Do do do. In the meantime, let's, uh. Double one from the post. That's why I'm looking for it. Um, blah, blah, blah. String of unexpected length. So I talk about um, multiple bytes for one character, right? So when we print this thing, there are actually two bytes for it. Um, where are we? Double wide. Double wide down here. Yeah, so here are those Chinese characters we're talking about. Um, battleship equals this. Now note that um, right, those, those two characters wide. Um, yeah, so, I mean, most terminals I use can deal with this, um, but it's, it's, there are problems with it, definitely. Um, knowing where the cursor is, hopefully it gives you the right math, right, to know, um, because you can't do normal math with this anymore. Um, the thing you probably want to do is import, um, there's a system call, um, called WC S width, WC width, um, WC width, but I'm, I have a Python version of it here and you can say WCS width of battleship and it will say, oh, it's four characters wide. So you have to deal with this. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an issue. Okay. We only have five minutes. Um, 
Anybody? Questions? Talk about terminals? Do I have other like terminally things I could show you? I have a terminally thing I could show you. Um, Um, let's see. Let's look at RL. I think I'm watching the comments, and, I, and there's nothing there, but I also am not totally sure. All right, let's look at, yeah, I think. Um, okay, check this out. I'm not going to talk about it much, because I'm not sure it's going to go anywhere, but, uh-oh. Um, check this out. I'm going to run Python, okay? Um, uh, but, oh, no, look, the... Uh, the uh, things of my things have all changed the case right s equals this string here but before i even type it it, it wrecks it oh no um my syntax errors say crazy things um this is a project i'm working on to try to i don't know if it'll amount to anything but um it's kind of cool that you can do this stuff um and if you look at my github you can see how how this is happening because I'm, I'm pushing it all of it even though i'm not like, talking about it much because I'm not sure how silly the idea is. Um, what else? Okay, well, that's really all I've got. So I'll, you all have a chance to get a drink while you uh, wait for the next talk. Um, Jeebs or Jeebies is going to talk about um, Plan 9, which sounds really cool, and it's file system stuff or something, something about REST. Um, thanks so much for uh, watching. I really appreciate it. Um, it was really helpful to be able to talk through things that I will, in a month, have to say in a much more official way. Um, if you have any questions, it would be great to hear from you about them because I'm not, obviously I have, there's other content I could include. Um, that's it. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, by hitting this stop stream button, I guess. All right, I guess I should do it on YouTube. I similarly like um, the cool iOS guy this morning, whose name I forget now. Um, don't know about the button. Or no, he knew about the button. It was an early morning person that didn't know about the button. All right, stop streaming. See you there.